What up, people? It is another glorious day. Real quick, let me get it out of the way. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Diamond MMA and also Ground Shark Coffee. Today, we got a special treat for you. So, um, I have a special guest that's going to be hopping on today, and we're going to be recording uh, for as long as he has time. Hopefully, we can knock out the hour. I'm not sure. But I have Kenny Florian that's going to be on today. So, me and Kenny are going to hop in on live, and we'll chit-chat a little bit. Um, get to know dude a little bit, honestly. Um, so unfortunately, unless your name is Kenny Florian, I cannot have you on live today. <laughs> All right. So uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy that and uh, enjoy the conversation and the chit chat. And then later on down the road, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to watch this and listen to it later. So really excited about today's conversation. If you uh, are on our Patreon, you would have already known about the times, dates and all that stuff. So let me see. Let me see. I think I saw him hop in. So I'll just invite him live real fast. So. Which, um, also, I just want to thank the guests for coming in, man. Looking forward to having this chit chat. I've been. Hey, what's up, man? What's going on, man? Dude, first of all, you're a fucking legend. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I know that might be weird to hear. I don't fucking know, but I don't care. But you are a legend. All right, and uh, I just want to say thank you so much for taking <clears throat> time out of your schedule to coming in and chit chatting with me. Um, this is all new to me. I'm still trying to figure out how this shit works. So, um, but I just want to say thank you for following the page and, uh, thank you for your time. Absolutely, man. A, a huge fan of your page and, uh, it's, it's entertained me for a little while now. So thank you for that. Yeah, dude. Um, so I'm going to, I like doing these like regular, like chit chat questions instead of like making it so like interviewee cause that shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm um, down. Whatever you want to do. A couple things I wanted to touch on. So you do uh battle box. So you're an yes. announcer on battle box. Was yeah. either, I, I think that started off on Sci-Fi Network like years ago. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that seems like a stretch to me from like punching people in the face <laughs> for funny to working with robots. So how did that come about? It's funny. You know, it's fighting is fighting, I guess. But no, absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it's completely different because there's so much technology involved. There, there's so much um strategy and but the the strategy is is pretty similar to, to fighting you know um the technology obviously is very different that's something i had to get up to speed on and really learn like the packets that we get for battle bots compared to like ufc is like literally we get like a, a stack of papers that's like that thick it's ridiculous and i have to learn about it and study it and talk to all the teams and you know why did you use you know, this kind of steel and, you know, well, why did you, it's like, it's crazy, but I have such a blast, man. It's, it's so fun. It's a now, lot of fun. Absolutely. Did you know absolutely anything about that shit before you got hired on? A, a little bit, right? So a, a little bit, like I, I saw it, it was uh, originally actually on Comedy Central, like way back, like late nineties, early two thousands, maybe early two thousands. And I used to watch it with my dad and that's all I really knew about it. It was just like kind of entertaining. And then uh, they happened to call me like the last week they were looking for like uh, someone for commentary. And I went in and did an interview and it worked out. <laughs> oh, shit. You can't yeah. go wrong with that. Like, thank you. Yeah, for job, man. <laughs> yeah. Man. Um, but like, uh, you know, you did you did something that's pretty smart. I think a lot of fighters don't quite understand is like fighting is not going to be the end all be all to your career because you're going to age and uh, it yeah. sucks. I like I miss punching people in the face. I still do it all the time. Uh -huh. yeah. I was never like professional. I was all amateur fights and stuff like that. But I still really enjoyed it. But there comes a time yeah. in your life where you're just like, uh, this kind of sucks ass, man. I'm like I'm getting hit a lot. My body feels like shit. You know, right? Like, the young, young, younger guys are coming up and they're just extremely talented. Not to take away from anyone else's talent, but the younger, the better, the stronger, the faster. They For learn sure. from everybody else's mistakes, like on yes. how better. Um, so, you know, you like paved the way for the guys who are eventually going to be fighting you. And you're like, no, damn it. They got all the secrets. Um, but I think that it's interesting, like, like in your career that you were smart enough to understand that there was going to be an end to fighting. And you started working your way into like commentary. Um, and it seems like a smart way. Like, do you have any advice for maybe fighters who are looking to further their career down the road? Yeah, man. Like, I, I'd love to say that, like, I planned it all out and it was like that. And like, it, you know, but. Honestly, it kind of just happened organically. Like, a, you know, I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And someone, hey, would you want to? I remember it was Joe Silva, the original matchmaker for the UFC. And, um, and he was like, hey, would you want to? You might fight either Clay Guida or Roger Huerta. Would you want to 
commentate this fight? And I was like, sure, yeah, I'll do that. That'll be fun. And then, you know, one thing led to another. Then, like, Joe Rogan ended up not being able to be at UFC 83 for some reason. It was a Montreal show when uh, Matt Serra was going to rematch George St. Pierre. And I got to do the whole pay-per-view. And I was, like, nervous as hell. I was like, how the hell am I going to fill Joe Rogan's shoes over here? Uh, but I got through it, and uh, it was fun. And then that led to an opportunity with ESPN, uh, which led to an opportunity with Fox. So I've just been, man, honestly, I've just been super lucky. And the first thing I would say is just, like, do what you love and try to find other aspects of it. And that will probably lead to something else or lead to, you know, and, and it, even fighting. Like, I didn't even – originally think I, would, I wanted to be a professional fighter all I wanted to do is do martial arts like every single day that was like I was just a martial arts nerd that wanted to learn stuff and train you know what I'm saying yeah so, I do. and that's it and then like oh okay I'll try a fight I'll try another and then you know it kind of snowballs and, and sometimes life takes you down paths that you could never expect yeah that's just true man <laughs> <laughs> you know it's weird like I started this page five years ago because I really wanted to shut down bullshit martial arts like that was yes. a big thing to me because I give a shit about the mark. I really care about the martial arts and not just jujitsu, which is what I'm doing now, or kickboxing, which is what I did before, or karate, mm -hmm. but all the arts because it helped me. Yeah. You know, it really yeah, for sure, dude. Help. It's it's cliche as hell though. You know, oh, martial arts changed my life, but it really did. Like I was getting yeah. beat out of me in school. I got hospitalized by a group of three or more than three, but I got hospitalized by a group of kids. You know, mm -hmm. two teachers watched the beating happen and they never did anything about it. And, uh, uh, so I got beat for five minutes. And a five-minute round is a oh. long-ass time to just get a beating. And so I was in the hospital for a couple of days, but a friend of mine handed me a, a card for karate. He's like, yo, dude, you need this. Because I couldn't yeah. find my way out of a paper bag. I would have lost one on one. It wasn't going to be good. Um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I did it, and I've never stopped, and I've always had a passion for it. And then I see these shiesty sons of bitches taking advantage of people who could really grow with a good instructor. And, right. Um, you know, it just infuriates me. But, you know, over the last couple of months, the page is just, like, blown up. Like, I didn't have any control over it. It just did its thing. That's awesome. And I was like, well, what do I do with this shit now? <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, yeah. well, I, I, like, and what I did was I, I was like, you know, I have a lot of these really great martial artists who follow the page. And I'm very fortunate for that. I think that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but it gives me an opportunity to go, you know what, well, while I'm tearing down the bullshit, let's introduce people to some good stuff, you know, yeah. like, great yeah. martial artists out there. Why did yeah. you start the martial arts? I started probably, I mean, so my dad was into martial arts. Like he, he was into judo and he was a black belt in judo and wanted us all to learn. So I think I started probably around uh, 10 or 11. And, and I did like, it was like Kempo Karate originally. Um, and then like some Kung Fu. And then I didn't really start again in martial arts or, or fighting or whatever jiu-jitsu until I was in college again believe it or not I was in college I was probably like 19 years old and like everybody else I saw this thing called the ultimate fighting championship and yeah. the skinny dude uh, you know skinny dude Hoist Gracie was was beating all these monsters and I was like wait a sec I gotta I gotta learn this because I felt like martial arts was the one and only thing that I felt that I was doing that it was just different. Like I was, I played soccer at a high level and I loved it and, you know, played other sports and I loved it. But when I did martial arts, even I remember when I was a kid in some dojo, I was like, I felt like I was doing something. It was like a religious experience. It was, it was something different. And I, I could just focus on, on that and that alone. I had a, I had a tough time focusing I had a tough time. Like I had a lot of energy and when I was doing martial arts, I could actually sit down and focus and study and learn. And that was, that, that was just a, a something that I always felt like there was a longing. And then when, when I saw Hoist Gracie do what he did, I was like, man, I got to do martial arts again. I just, I just felt the other thing is I was a pretty fearful kid, man. Like I was, I was scared. I was like, <laughs> I was probably not the toughest kid. I was not, you know, I guess I was, you know, kind of tough, but I just walked around with a lot of fear and a lot of insecurity. And martial arts kind of changed that. I knew I needed to to run towards my fear, or it was gonna take me over in some way, shape, or form in a negative way. You know? Yeah, I mean, I I can definitely relate to the fear thing, man. <laughs> I always get yeah. my
all the time in school. And my yeah. problem was when I was in school is not that I, I would I, – really, my ego was bigger than my ass. So yeah. I would be like, oh, you want to fight? Well, let's go. And I was terrible. <laughs> I was just awful. <laughs> and uh, if I could go back in time and meet myself as a kid, I'd be like, yo, dude, like, you can't fight. Let's just – I might just walk away. <laughs> I was like, I was just shitty. Um, but it was like, to me, it was like the only thing I really felt like, not necessarily that I was good at, but like, it, maybe, it, maybe it's a weird spiritual fucking thing. I don't know. I hate things. Yeah. Way. But it was almost like it was supposed to happen. You know? Right. Like, I took my first class and then something was like, yo, dude, you need to do that shit. And I was like, yeah. all right, well, this is now where I'm going to go. And I'm just going to keep walking this way. And it's really crazy because over the years, you know, you see – to me personally, I've been doing this for 21 years, and I've seen thousands of people come and go. And uh, even if it doesn't, even if they don't stick with it, it still seems like it's, it's impactful in some way in their life. Maybe they remember one technique, or maybe they remember yeah. one phrase from their instructor or whatnot. But my favorite thing to hear from people, honestly, which is what I'm about to get into, is uh, I love hearing stories from the dojo. Not necessarily from like pro fights and stuff like that, because we all get to see that. But yeah. to me, the coolest shit that I get to see is whenever somebody, some crazy dude walks in off the street into the dojo, or you get like some infighting and how, <laughs> something like that. So you, you, own, you own a martial arts studio now. Yeah, yeah, I own two. I own one in Brookline, Massachusetts called Florian Martial Arts Center, and I own another one in Los Angeles um, called Meraki Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, M-E-R-A-K-I. So, um, yeah, I've, it, it, it's been awesome. And that's, that's the main reason, man, is like – Honestly, I feel like it's life changing, and, and that's what I feel like I'm at the point in my life where I want to give back and help change lives. And, and, you know, martial arts changed my life, man, and I want to kind of spread it around. That's pretty cool. Now, have you had anything crazy happen in your, in your years of being in the dojo? Any like stories that sticks out to you? Um, I mean, I remember I, I was involved in a challenge match. There was a dude who came in, and uh, he was, he was, uh, like this roided out like beast and no did one was in the, huh? Did he, did he train he or did. I guess he was like a karate, he came from like a karate background, but he didn't have any grappling and he was just like low to the ground and freaking like beastly. And I was in the academy uh, by myself, just kind of hanging out, just waiting for like, you know, class to start in like an hour and a half. Cause I was super early <laughs> and I'm like stretching out. And this dude's like, so I hear you guys, you Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys, like, do challenge matches and stuff. I'm like, well, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just sitting here, like, uh, you know. And, and, you know, basically, like, he, he wanted to train. He's like, well, well, let's train. And no one's in the academy. I'm there by myself. And pretty soon, like, we're fighting. Like, we're straight up fighting. And he's trying to elbow me and headbutt me. And Now, was it gloves? Like, no gloves? Just no gloves, gloves, man. No, okay. <laughs> no gloves. And, uh no mouth guard, none of that, you know, like none of that, like just fighting. And I ended up, I think I submitted him with an arm lock. He screams, he lets go. He's like, I didn't tap. And I was like, so we have to start again. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> so finally I get around to his back and I choked him to sleep. And, uh, yeah, it basically he choked to sleep. My instructor walks in. He's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so he walks in. And uh, the guy ended up signing up like two weeks later. He came in two weeks with his tail between his legs. And that was pretty crazy because it was one of those things like you heard about, but you're like, this isn't going to happen, you know? And yeah. Well, happened. nine times out of 10, when you get a douchebag that comes in the gym like that, they usually yeah. leave and they yeah. come back. Um, yeah. But it's cool that you're able to check the dude's ego, though, because that's always nice. It's because you yeah. have affected that dude. So hopefully he's not an asshole anymore. <laughs> right. I know. I hope so, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you're a you're a family dude, man. You got a a kid. I got a That's kid now. Yeah, I, I have a I have a baby girl, uh, six and a half uh, months old, and uh, yeah, pretty crazy, man. <laughs> How do you balance that shit, man? I like that's that's got to be tough. Like you got you have a you have two schools. Yeah, you're you have, you're still commentating uh, on the UFC for Fox. Mm -hmm. You are doing Battle Box commentating yep. on that. So how do you actually make the time to like? How do you? decide what the important thing obviously family's important yeah you have to make those decisions about your time a good question you know i think it, it all comes down to priorities and, and just kind of um you know it, it takes time to make time i think also and that i mean like 
it took me a little while to understand that I can handle a lot. I used to get stressed out a lot. Be like, oh man, I got to go here. I got to go there. I got to go. Now I just, I feel grateful to have all these opportunities. And if I can't do it, I don't do it. If it's taking too much time away from my family, then I don't do it. You know, I, I want to be involved with my, with my child's life as much as possible and see her grow and help her, help her with whatever. And, you know, and it's a lot of work, like being a mom's like the most difficult job in the world. So anytime I can help out, I try. And um, yeah, it's, it's a balancing act. And, and it's not always easy. But um, I, I try to make the best decisions that I can. And, and, uh, and, and also do things that I love doing. Like I, I try not to do things that like even if I'm getting paid, and I'm not enjoying it, I don't do it. I, I only want to spend time doing what I love and, and what is going to mean something to me. And if it's not, then I don't do it. But I'm yeah. lucky. I, I just feel super lucky that I'm, I'm in this situation where I can make those kind of decisions and I have some opportunities to, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, it, to me, like when I see something like that, like, you know, like I, really the only interaction I get with most people that I ever talk to on here is through uh, social media. But, you know, obviously yeah. I think that people always on social media put what they feel is most important to them out forward. Like mm. that people never have, like you, you'll almost never see a photo of somebody looking like straight shit in the morning time. Just like, <laughs> like, oh God, it's, it's always like a, like, this is the best face I can put on. And this is what I want to put out to the world, you know? And then you see, I was actually face. looking for a filter that I could use on here. Is there a good filter I could use? Here? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Wait, no. Oh, my hat. Oh. I think I wear the hat. My hair is always looking like shit. Dude, like just rock the hat. <laughs> um, but like you know, you when you when you look at people's social media, it kind of gives you an op an opportunity to see what their persona is really like. Because yeah. like see through people bullshit, it's it, which is true, right? Um, I follow I follow uh, Rory McDonald, and um, you know he's obviously he's a successful fighter and stuff like that, and he's doing well. Yeah. For but if you look at his social media, it's very interesting because he posts a lot of things about the Bible and he posts a lot of things about his family because that's what's important yeah. to him, you know. And right. I, that you post a lot of things about your family, which I think is great. And I think that when you see a lot of people who put this like fake persona out online, like, oh, well, it's all about work and it's all about uh, my training. It's all about this. I think that they're missing out on a really important part of their life. You know, yeah. like, what's really important to you because all of that shit's going to go away. You know, like your fighting career eventually will go away. You know, yep. the people who are there saying that they're there for you oh, will eventually go away. Like at the end of the day, you, there's a very few select group of people in your life that are important. So I think it's awesome that you take the time to put that out there to show people like, you know, this is, this is who I'm with. This is my, my daughter. This is, you know, yeah. this is my life. Um, and I think that that's rare. I think that's a good example to set for some of these new up and coming guys who are all about like, from what I've seen, just like bitches and money. Like I'm yeah. not, that's what they put out there. There's more to life than fighting. You know, um, so, sure. when, you know, obviously martial arts is a big part of your life, but do you have anything else that you really enjoy doing besides like the arts? Um, let's see, man, anything, anything where I'm going to be able to learn and try to upgrade as a human, I'm down for like a, doing, putting myself in uncomfortable situations and learning, like I just started getting into uh, doing like Wim Hof, like Wim Hof breathing and ice baths and all oh, that well, stuff. Which you is... gotta, you gotta back that shit up. <laughs> well, what, what kind of breathing? Yeah, it's uh, this dude. Have you heard about this guy? He got Wim Hof. It's like he's, they call him the Ice Man, and he's he does like all these crazy things. And basically, like he taught himself to be able to withstand really cold temperatures. Like this guy will, you know, climb like crazy mountains in the snow barefoot with no shirt on, like in, you know, below zero weather. And basically, you know, it, it's, it's stuff that I wish I had when I was fighting, but basically he does all these different breathing techniques. And, um, it, it kind of seems like it's a big, it's McDojo shit, but it's not, um, <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's like, it's all about like kind of, um, you know, being able to, uh, being able to connect yourself in order to do um, and basically to heighten your experience for life. Like th that's the way I see it anyway. Like um, I, I think it helps me as, as, uh, as a husband, it helps me as a dad, it helps me as a, 
as a martial artist. Mm-hmm. So it's just like kind of these breathing techniques that kind of get you centered and, and kind of... Is that of, like uh, what Horian does? Like Horian Gracie does a lot of that. Like, yeah, Hickson, Hickson. Yeah, yeah. Hickson, Sim, very similar. Hickson and Crone. Uh-huh. They, they do like a lot of, yeah, it's, it's, it's very similar to that for sure. Because a friend of mine, actually, he's, uh, he, uh, Hickson has a lot of like breathing techniques, like, a, a, like so, something I think he's been doing forever. Um, okay. And then yep. a friend of mine started doing that before his like matches or before he'll spar and stuff like that. And it's funny because like, I'm not gonna lie, it actually seemed to help him. Like, yeah. just like yeah. being able to control like your breathing and stuff like that. I mean, it's interesting shit. And, and there's a lot of science to it too, because it, it really like, they, they, they've been studying how your body responds to it. They notice that it strengthens your immune system. It balances out your brain so you can become more focused. Um, and it's not easy. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things you got to do, but you know, I think we've, I think, you know, when we look back, I, I think we've lost, we, we've gained a, a tremendous amount of information, but I think we've lost a lot of information as well along the way. And it feels like it's almost this tribal thing that we've lost over time, like uh, about like learning how to breathe and connecting to yourself. Now we're, you know, I think we've lost a sense of ourselves in a lot of ways of, of you know, we have so many different opportunities to, to do different things and be different people and, you know, go here and go there. But I think we kind of have lost a sense of ourselves along the way, you know, and it's yeah. funny that you say that, man. Like I had this, uh, I still, I'm still want to do this. I eventually will just because I'm, I'm dumb and I do dumb things. Um, but, uh, there, I always had this, this feeling like in the United States, not so much all over the world because there are all these rites of passage, right? So like, um, into manhood. So all these different cultures have these rites of passage. Mm. Okay, this is the marker that says you are now a grown man. Like these yes. now responsibilities have changed. The dynamic that you have with your group and your people are going to change, and what yep. we expect of you will change. And it doesn't really seem like we really have that here in the states. And I, I, one of my things I'm going to be doing here within the next couple of years is going to these places and actually participating in a lot of the rites of passage. Dude, um, that's awesome. I want to feel what that's like. And I think that, like you said, I think we gain a lot, but I think we lose a lot too. But I think that's yeah. because of the status quo. It's like whatever is the normal, like everybody wants to hop on that. And then, right. you know, at one time, like they would be like, burn the witch. And everybody was like, cool, let's burn the witch. And it's like, and then over time, we're like, yo, dude, like maybe we, we shouldn't just burn people because <laughs> we thought it's cool. Like, you know, right. so then that, now that status quo has changed. But the same thing for yeah. that negativity that changes into right. something positive is the same thing, I think, with a lot of positive things. You know, we're like, oh, well, that's a little weird. So yeah. because it's not what normal people do, like we're just going to not do it. But then yeah. people forget, like normal people don't go to the Olympics. Normal yeah. people don't put themselves through that kind of training. Normal yep. people don't eat like an athlete eats. Normal people eat like shit, you know? So it's like sure. people just kind of travel these paths, even if they're bad for them, because most people do them. They're like, oh, well, everybody's doing this. I'm exactly. Do this. And uh, I think that's a shame because I do think that we really miss out on some really cool opportunities to grow as human beings, you know, yep. experience. Why shut yourself off, you know? Like, um, now, I'm actually going to be taking a trip out to L.A. here soon. Um, I was supposed to do it this last week, but I was actually curious what your thoughts are. So um, phase two of McDojo life, which is I never thought would ever happen. Yeah. I'm actually going. Going to the studios and calling them out in person. Now, I'm not doing it in an old. School way, I'm doing it in a. Uh, hopefully a politically correct way i guess yes wow dude to... no way that's crazy yeah man um so there actually is a seminar i found out that's going to be taking place this month in la dude um, so uh, i just i just hit up Hanato laranja to try to see if i can get him to do it <laughs> so he's an actor and yeah. he's actually a pretty damn good actor. I give him he credit, is. right? He's amazing. So I, was, I was thinking if I could get somebody like that to go with me, yes. and I could film them, and they could, you know, just we can all just kind of call out the bullshit a little bit. Yeah. I think that would make for something really dynamic, and I think it would make for something really cool. Um, and no one's doing it. Yeah. Um, and I think that it needs to be done, though, because these people are going to yes. take advantage of. Like this one mm-hmm. dude, um, I won't say his name because I want to make it a surprise whenever I call him out. But um, he believes that you can, like, control people literally with your energy, with your mind. 
like and not control people like you know like brainwash them because obviously he's right. brainwashing people yeah but control them physically with his with his chi and uh you know to me makes sense yeah <laughs> of course it's science sure sure <laughs> you could you could prove it with your mind yeah. Yeah. um but to me i think that that's a crock of shit um, I think yeah. that it's dangerous to teach people this because I think that they actually will rely on what you said. I think it will brainwash them to the point where they will try to defend themselves with this stuff. And I actually was very curious because whenever I, I get a chance to talk to like a, a martial artist or somebody who's been doing this for a long time, what are your opinions about that level of crazy? Like, do you, do you feel it's dangerous? Do you think you should let it ride or leave it be? What, what do you think? Uh... I mean, in some cases, they actually might be believing it, you know, and it's like, man, it beliefs, a, beliefs an interesting thing, right? Because I, I think it's the very thing that kind of drives us and allows us to do some crazy things and, and allows us to do some things that have never been done before, right? But when you start kind of ignoring certain laws of nature and you start ignoring, you know, things that you see daily uh, over and over and over again, but you, th you think you can do a certain thing or you're getting people to believe you can do a certain thing and you knowingly cannot do that. That's when it gets twisted. Right. And that, that's when you, they need to be stopped. Essentially they're like a cult, right? They're, they're starting something. They're doing something very malicious at that point. And that's when you start seeing people get, get hurt. And that's why I, I love your Instagram because it's also, it's, it's getting people to realize, you know what, that's not real. And I think a lot of people, like, for example, listen, Bruce Lee is one of my heroes. He's one of my martial arts uh, idols, right? He's one, he's one of the guys who has improved the game of mixed martial arts. But you, do you know how many people, like, are like, dude, Bruce Lee would have won the UFC, man. Like, he's the he would have killed everybody, heavyweights. But, okay, first, we know that's a movie, right? Like, he was in a movie. He was not, like... But we think that's real. Like so many people actually think that that's real and that like because you did something in a movie or you did it in a demonstration that you could do it to anybody and everybody. And well, obviously that's not necessarily the case. He, it could be that Bruce Lee's a great fighter. But we don't know that. You know what I mean? So. Well, there's no real proof, I guess you could say. I mean, there's a lot of hearsay. Yeah. You got guys like legends like Dan and Asanto who can right. who vouch and stuff like that. And like, sure. Guys legit. But it's and also a different time. Like the fighters of, you know, the boxers in the 30s aren't as good as the boxers in the 60s and in the 80s. Like it, it, it changed. The fight game evolves. Like combat changes over time. We know more information. We know what works a little bit better. Like... UFC fighters, when I was fighting, are not as good as the ones now, period. Like, period. Well, there's – and it, the game has ebbs and flows to it as well, which is interesting because fighters are learning and studying other fighters, and they're going, okay, well – Yes. If, if, of course, if you've ever been in a training well, – stupid-ass question. But if anybody else has ever been to a training camp, nine times out of ten when you're, you're doing whatever it is you're doing, your, your training camp is designed around the fighter you're about to fight. So, like, yep. okay – guy's a southpaw then i'm gonna bring in training partners who are southpaws who are good at that or this guy is great wrestler so i'm gonna bring in some guys to help me bone up on my wrestling or at least defense, mm -hmm. take down defense. um but that's how the game evolves is they get better at fighting this guy 100 percent. it just it just dominoes well even right now you see a lot of guys with like karate footwork and stuff and they're changing their dynamics with their head movement. It's not yep. like it was. So, like, maybe, hypothetically in this Bruce Lee situation, maybe in UFC 1, he would have done okay. Right? Yeah, but right. The truth is, is, like, to my knowledge, Bruce Lee did not – of course, he exposed a lot of people to jiu-jitsu earlier on. Like, he did do some arm locks yes. and stuff like that. And that's cool, right? Yeah. But – I don't think that when if Hoist got his hands on him, that Bruce is going to be able to do much about that. Sure, sure, you know? sure. And there's actually a, one of my favorite. I'm, have you seen the Gracie Challenge videos? Yes, I love. Yeah, them. So one of my favorites is this guy who actually was in UFC one, 
and he's a Kung Fu guy. And yes, he he's like actually from Massachusetts. He was close a to a town. Next. His name is Jason Delucia. Yes, yes, dude, that's yeah. the guy. And he <laughs> went to the Gracie. I think he did two Gracie challenges, if I remember correctly. I think he went, he lost, yeah. and yeah. Then he did like everybody else. Oh, you got lucky, let's do it again. And of course, yeah, 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 yeah. if anybody's not familiar with the Gracie challenges, what they would usually happen is back then, for as thuggish as it kind of was, it was very formal. Like everybody was there. It was very yes. respectful. Like it was, it was kind of like to me, it was like an honor for them to even accept the fact that you were serious. For sure. Wanted to go. And then you went, and there was all, the, everybody was fucking. wall to wall people who were all training there to see to develop their art which mm -hmm. is a badass way to develop your art like just yeah man what happens. and he went in and he lost and then immediately gets back up and goes let's do it again well yeah. that's the stupidest shit you could do in a grace challenge because the first time they were really polite to you they submit you you tap and then you move on and if you're done you're done the yep. second time you agree right afterwards <laughs> They beat the shit out of you. Like, oh, okay, I get your back, and now they're slapping with the face. Like, are you sure you're not done? And then they submit you. So he lost then. And then yep. it's like, you know what? I think I can take him. And rather than actually boning up on his jiu-jitsu and trying to get better at that, he's like, no, fuck that. He's a fluke. <laughs> yep. I'm going to I'm gonna go to the biggest stage I can find, and I'll prove to them. And, the, and then he got to that. He gets his ass. Got arm locked. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's called dumb. You're doubling down on stupid man. Like, my favorite thing to see from people is when they lose and they accept it and they go, you know what? I'm humbled. It's time for me to grow as a human being. Maybe I should learn this. You know? and, 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 dude, you just hit on a, a very important thing. And I, I got to run it a little. little bit. But what I wanted to say is you hit on a very important thing. Because this this is where, as human, this is why we need martial arts so much. It because it literally it shows you physically, mentally, spiritually exactly where you're going wrong as a human. And I, by no means, am a perfect uh, human being, and I've made a lot of mistakes, and will continue to make a lot of mistakes. But it hits you right in the face with them quite literally and it tells you okay this is where you got to improve this is where you got to get better this is your weakness what are you going to do about it are you going to ignore it and make excuses or are you going to face it head on and and change it and, and become better and you know I, I think that's what we're supposed to be doing it every single day like being aware being aware being aware of if we're being a dickhead or being aware if we're being mean being aware if you know we're being too much of a wimp you know being aware of you know all those things and and i think martial arts helps bring bring that out of us and helps bring that awareness if you're really kind of paying attention and trying to be better yeah i agree completely hey man like that you can't lie on the mats there's no way to lie like to be honest, like, I don't know how you feel about it, but um, in the fights that I had, it was the training camps sucked. Not being able to eat what I want sucked. Yep. Going to, like, a shark tank, and I knew it was a sparring day, and I knew I was going to be tired and get my ass beat sucked. Like, all of yep. that sucked, right? But it, it mentally it makes you a stronger human being because mm -hmm. that is probably going to be the hardest thing you're ever going to have to do in your life. I can't think of anything harder. Knowing that someone's going to get in there and just really tear you down mentally, physically, to yep. make you better, it's hard, right? But then the moment, it wasn't ever a win or a loss. I, I Honestly, I was never that competitive to give a shit if I won or lost, which probably why I never, <laughs> I never I like pursued it as being a pro. <laughs> but like um, when, when I fought, it was euphoric. It was like this is a moment that me and another human being are sharing. That is completely 100% honest. We're yep. honest with each other, and it's a moment that you can't have 
anywhere else. You know, there's, there's 100%, no, dude. You know, that person's trying to murder you with their hands. You want to hurt them with your hands, and then all of a sudden, you just, you have a connection with a human being. Like, people always wonder, like, why do they hug afterwards? Like, why are they friends now? It's like, because they shared something that you will never experience in your life. And if you get the chance, man, I'm telling you, I really think that everybody at least one time, even at an amateur level, yep. as long as they're medically fit to do so. You know? Absolutely. And, and, you're, and, and it's going to make you more humble, too, man. Like, you know, when, you, when you're going daily, you know, in, in sparring matches and you, you realize that, you know what, it doesn't matter how badass you are or how much martial arts you know, like. There's still something else that could take you out. You zig when you should have zagged, and you are out. Or, you know, you, you extend your arm a little bit too much here or there, and that's an arm lock. Like, so it's it humbles you. It, it, it realizes it gets you to, um, you know, just become. I'm way more aware. I think it, it, it makes you a better person, hopefully. You know, it should anyway. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I think it's it really is life-changing, you know. Yeah, man. Well, I know you said you had to go here in a second, but I just want to say thank you again for your time. Uh, before you head out, though, um, yeah, a lot of shit that you do, so I don't know. I, I'd like to leave it open if you got anything that you'd like to say to anybody who's watching or anything like that. could be advice. You could plug your own stuff, whatever it is. Just final thoughts, final words before we head out. And thanks so much, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, awesome talking to you. And hopefully we'll, we'll do it again. Um, no, just uh, let's see. Check out BattleBots. Actually, it'll be on tonight on uh, Discovery Channel. I think it's at 8 o'clock tonight if you guys want to check it out. I'll also be doing the, um, the weigh-in show today for UFC 228. I'll be doing um the the desk tomorrow as well a uh, big fight darren till taking on tyron woodley uh so check that out on pay-per-view and uh let's see yeah check me out on instagram if you guys have it right there and uh you guys if you have the opportunity to train uh martial arts specifically brazilian jiu-jitsu or any martial arts That's real Muay Thai, you know, kickboxing, whatever it is, Jeet Kune Do, you know, like explore it. If you're a fan of martial arts, go and do it. Test yourself. If you guys are ever in Los Angeles, come by Meraki Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. If you're in Boston, come by Floyd Martial Arts Center or just go anywhere. It does not matter. And man, if you come to LA, come, come visit for sure. I'm definitely going to. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Man. yeah. Like, man. Telling you, like, I, I hope you just don't come during one of my classes. I'm like, dude, the whole time he was talking about me. I was the <laughs> fake guy. I can't just believe it. he set me, me up. Dude, uh, <laughs> just before before you go, uh, the dude from Tent MMA, Gene Hackleman, is that his name? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, we've been chit-chatting here and there, right, on his page. And uh, he was like, you better not post one of my fucking videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to – wouldn't do that, man, but – yeah, but thank you again for your uh, your time. And, uh, yeah, I'd really love to do this again. And when I get out to L.A., I'll hit you up. And hopefully I can go train at your gym. That'd be awesome. 100%, man. Great talking to you. All right. Thank you, man. All right, brother. Bye.